similar to the end of my on-air promotions career, I was like, wow, I'm coming to the end of my deal, of my actual contract, because I was like an executive signing contracts. And I saw John Sykes was still the president um, of VH1. I, I saw how VH1 was going to go. Um, and I was like, hey, I feel like I did my thing. I got this channel off the ground. I worked really hard for Jeff Gaspin and John. Um, I really love my team. Um, but what really, really happened was the very last thing early in the year, January, February of the last year of my contract, I said to Jeff and John, like, you know, we're producing Zoolander. It's coming out in the fall. Here's what. Let this be kind of the last thing I do for VH1. I feel like it's in good hands. I feel like the channel, by the way, is going in a direction that I might not really be a great contributor to. It's going to be a very commercial television network, as it should be. And I, like I had only been there for, you know, six, seven years. And to your earlier question, I was like, I'm going to go make some more movies. And by the way, I was the producer on a movie that I had permission to do from VH1 in the middle of my tenure as an executive at VH1, which I timed to do, to, to do principal photography on um, during my second maternity leave. And it was Jim McKay's Girls Town. Great movie, great director, stellar cast. And um, I, I was, and then Zoolander came onto my radar and we made it happen. And I was like, you know, I still love movies. I'm going to make some movies. And we agreed to that parting the ways. We ended up delivering uh, Zoolander. It was, it was tight to the release date. We delivered in August and it was going to premiere um, in September. It was really tight. So for the third time, I was pregnant. Contract year. You know, can I deliver Zoolander and leave? And, you know, just take a couple months, have my kid in January and, you know, have that break. They said, sure, I hand in Zoolander. My last day work in seven years was August 31st. And I'm like, wow, it's Labor Day weekend. I am free and clear. This is an incredible feeling. I had two little kids pregnant with a third. Um, it was Labor Day. The next Monday after Labor Day was the first day of preschool for my two little kids. And the next day that week was Tuesday, the second day of preschool for my two little kids. And it happened to be Tuesday, September 11th, 2001. And we lived downtown below 14th Street. I dropped um, my kids at preschool, came 100 feet um, east on 15th Street, turned right on 8th Avenue and you, there's a clear shot uh, where 8th Avenue turns into Hudson Street to the World Trade Center and it was on fire. It was 8.30 in the morning, you know, right at 8.30 was drop off. So imagine 11 minutes later that, and you know, you didn't know what was going on. I walked back to school and a guy who's an investment banker or something in, you know, financial industry had a cell phone at that time in 2001 and he said you're not gonna believe this I found that my mother just called me and she says there's a plane sticking out of the World Trade Center and I said mom don't be ridiculous I don't know what you're watching and I said no uh, Bruce I just saw it I went to the corner and we walked back to the corner looked up and you know all hell broke loose so it was so weird and disorienting of a time Below, we lived on the block of St. Vincent's, which was um, supposed to be this disaster relief area, and 
hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of medical practitioners converged on St. Vincent's, and of course there were no cases, you know, there were no, nothing but fatalities, there were no injuries. And um, so the emotional part of it is that, you know, really life turned upside down in a second. The tactical professional part of it is that my film's financing, two films, fell apart. And I was like, oh, okay, so I guess I'm not gonna make a movie right this second. I'll figure it out. And I got, I told you I love to work. What happened was I somehow got a consulting gig for the AMC networks. And AMC at that time, believe it or not, the year 2001, was structuring their first ever upfront presentation. It was a non-commercial network. It was just like Turner Classic Movies. They had no commercials. They had gone to this intermission format with a break in between, you know, the middle of their John Wayne movies or whatever, but they were finally structuring this as a commercial network. So a little bit of programming consult, a little bit of ad sales, you know, consult. I was a good P&L person. And I started going out to Long Island, reverse commuting on a train, five months pregnant, you know, 9-11, like it was really a weird time. And at the same time, an old girlfriend from my independent film world called me up and said, hey, guess what? Remember that boyfriend you met over the summer? I can't tell you what it's gonna be, but he's gonna move to the United States, British guy, and he is gonna have a phenomenal kick-ass job, and you're gonna go work for him. He has the perfect job for you. And I was like, well, you know, I have this consulting thing and then my kid and then I'm going to make movies again anyway. And she was in my movie world and she's like, okay, but you should meet him. You'll see when it's announced. So just about a month later in October, um, this news is announced that this guy called Michael Jackson from England was hired as the CEO for Barry Diller at the place called USA Networks, Inc. And essentially it was USA and Sci-Fi, the cable networks, the Universal Music Studio, uh, uh, the Universal Film Studio, Universal Music, which was a Vivendi mm -hmm. asset, and the Universal Theme Parks. And I'm like, okay, TV, USA and Sci-Fi doesn't sound like my alley, but uh, my friend Doug Herzog from Comedy Central was at USA. Bonnie Hammer was at Sci-Fi. And then in every article it was like, and also Barry Diller's going to do these little digital networks, something, something, independent networks. I go meet Michael. I start this interview process. The job opportunity is to basically start this network called trio and what it was was that Barry had acquired a, a it, it didn't have to do with my channel's name but a trio of networks from this Canadian company trio was an arts network NWI was a news network and there was a Dot com that was going to be another digital network called crime.com and it was going to be a crime network. So I had a fork in the road in December, a step up in a programming job at AMC. Like they really like me. I really like them. Come be, you know, the head of programming for the new AMC. We're going to do original programming, not just John Wayne movies. No one believes it, but we're going to do it or come be the head of something that doesn't exist yet, be the president of TRIO. And, you know, it was kind of the first time I thought to myself, like, similar to all those years ago, right out of college, a couple years out of college, do I want to be a small fish, second AD, in this huge pond on huge, amazing movies, or do I want to be a big fish, in a riskier pond, the producer of, you know, poison, swoon, safe, whatever, kids, whatever. 
And it probably wasn't as crystal clear as that, but those were the mechanisms by which I struggled with this decision. And I somehow took the flyer to be the president of this non-existent network called TRIO. And that was my next gig in television. And uh, through the, the, the mighty power, essentially, of mergers and acquisitions, that's how I spent the next 10 years, 12 years, between 02 and 14 as a television executive.